Hi, and welcome to This Week on 33rd Street, the Women's Soccer Edition. I'm sports editor Mike Wisniewski, and I'm joined today by t our two associate sports editors, Kenny Casper and Mike Tony, both of whom are b women's soccer beats. And we're here today to talk about the big Penn Princeton game coming up this weekend. Women's soccer had a dramatic victory over Brown, one nothing on Saturday for homecoming weekend, and now they'll have a chance to play Princeton for a share of the Ivy title Saturday at Princeton. Kenny, do you want to explain how the possible tie-breaking scenarios would work if Penn beats Princeton and if Dartmouth wins at Cornell? Okay, well, there are actually three different scenarios, but the one we're going to concentrate on today is the most likely scenario, or at least the most controversial scenario, um, and that would be where Penn goes to Princeton, beating, beats Princeton, and gets a share of the Ivy title. However, Dartmouth is also playing Cornell. If they beat Cornell, then you'll have three teams tied atop the Ivy slate at 6-1. and one. Since all three teams are 1-1-0 one and one and o in head-to-head -head competition, it really won't resolve anything to look at head-to-head -head competition in terms of determining uh, which team will receive an NCAA tournament bid. Um, all three teams will share the Ivy Championship regardless of what happens uh, in that scenario, but the NCAA tournament bid, that's a little more complicated, um, and what will actually, how it will be decided is that they will choose a team's name out of a hat in a broadcasted uh, online event um, to determine that, uh, and that's uh, how it's looking. Yeah, it almost sounds a little ridiculous, and you even wrote about that in your column this week, that there has to be another way. Mike, I mean, you don't see this in other soccer competitions like the World Cup. They're not just going to like pull t teams' names out of the hat if they happen to have the same amount of points after like the group play. So how do you think like they could have a better way of resolving this? Uh, put the hats away. Have a one-game playoff. It's really that simple in this case. It's it's it, it only needs to be, it needs to be decided on the field, you know, not in not in a fedora. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I would jump in and say that I'm I recognize the logistical difficulties of putting together a playoff are significant. Um, for that reason, I I would say look at some other statistical basis. Um, there's more than head to head to head. Although these teams have the same records, they didn't have identical performances in the season, and they should be trying to send the strongest team possible. Um, and so I would suggest, for instance, uh, looking at head to head um, differential and goals uh, for those teams. Uh, for instance, if Princeton wins four nothing against Penn, or you know, uh, some sort of scenario where Penn beats Princeton five one. It's going to be pretty clear that, to me, that Penn should be the, the better team next to us. Right. But before we even get to that point, we have to have, you know, Penn actually has to win at Princeton, like they did two years ago when they won the Ivy League title. And Penn has the top-ranked defense in the Ivy League. They're going to play against Princeton's offense, which is the top-ranked also in the Ivy League. So, Mike, what do you think is going to give on Saturday? I think this Princeton offense is phenomenal, and you need to start by looking at Jen Hoy. She's got 17 goals on the year, 36 points. Put that in perspective. We all know how great Carrie Scalora is, but she only has 11 points. So that's not to say that Carrie is, you know, not the, the third that, uh, that Jen Hoy is, but Jen Hoy is pretty good. Lauren Lazo, excellent too. They're one and two in points for the Ivy League. This is a, this is a phenomenal offense. Uh, I see them kind of overpowering Penn's defense uh, come Saturday. All right, so you want to give a prediction for your game? I'm going to go Princeton 3-1. I think Penn is, uh, ha it has a history of, of not converting on a lot of good chances, whether that be Aaron Mikolai or uh, Alyssa Berdini, certainly Megan York. That kind of tendency, that spells trouble against a team like Princeton. It comes out fast, strong, things that Penn has, has, str has struggled to do this year. Kenny, how about you? Will you agree? Uh, well, you know what? I'm going to have to say that I think that Penn's defense is a case of an unstoppable force, meaning an immovable object. Um, Penn has shown that it can hold out long enough for its offense to get those goals, and it looked their offense looked as good as it ever has against Brown, even though it took them to overtime to score. So I'm going to I'm not going to say that they're going to be able to s to completely shut out Princeton, but I will say that I think that they can come away with a win at 2-1 at Princeton. All right, there you go. We don't know. Penn could win the Ivy title, they could 
lose the Ivy title or you know they could win the Ivy title and still not get a shot at the NCAA tournament. Either way, we'll be covering the game this weekend at Princeton. It's at 4 o'clock. We'll be live tweeting about it. And thanks for joining us on this week on 33rd Street.